Welcome to the People's Farm. Welcome back, America. Um, I'm your host, Kwame Ennis. We have a fantastic show. Um, a little out of our norm, um, not so uh, uh, political in terms of uh, what's going on here and now today, but a lot more uh, into the artistic world. Um, we're going to do human interest today. Um, I have a fantastic guest, Mr. Joe Moscato. Thank Joe, you. Nice, nice to see you. Nice to see Thank you Thank you to be here. Okay. Uh, I know you. I know you as a... Uh, artist and photographer, but for those who don't know, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'd start by saying I'm a, a child. I'm a little kid in a candy store. And there's so much candy, so much goodies, that it's hard to find enough room in my hands to pick them up. Mm -hmm. Does that mean as a visual artist in New York as City? As not only a visual artist, whatever I see, I like, I have eyes, I'm an observer of things going on, I'm a voyeur, I see things, wow, you know, and I'm very impressed by what I see around me, you know, the visual context. Uh, what is it you discover that you had this uh, ability, whether it was in a, uh, you know, pen and ink form, in a painting form, sculpture form? It's hard, but one incident kind of like uh, stands out. When I was a kid, I was about 16 and hanging out with the homeboys. And I decided to go downtown because something in my head told me that this is the direction that I should go explore. You mean downtown New York? Downtown New York. Okay, went so down to Manhattan. And, and uh, the day I got back, actually, I was informed by my father that a friend of mine was assaulted and stabbed in, around the, the neighborhood. Okay. And, uh, and about what year this was in what neighborhood? When I was 16. And honestly, it was around Allerton Avenue. Okay, so it's right here in, in the and Bronx. Right here in the Bronx, mm -hmm. and uh, very seriously injured. And it just occurred to me, but without the temptation to explore down, down Manhattan, mm -hmm. and just like break the routine of just hanging out you would have been in I would have might have been okay. the person well, who was question just a random sort of crime of opportunity a robbery a gang thing what no, was just it? a more like a fight you know oh, playground is, fight and this is in the 1960s this is this is not uh, even past I should say more like about the 56 the 50s? 56 okay. late 50s okay. and uh, what was the makeup of the neighborhood what was the climate I just middle you know, class Okay. It was basically a middle class. It was like white, black, mixed, mm -hmm. Hispanic. Municipal workers, city workers. Yeah, well, it was a middle class neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Basically working, it was kind of like pre-World uh, War II where the houses were uh, brick. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's, uh, it was a, a area that you consider to be quiet and middle class without violence. That violence was coming. But uh, it's kind of like idyllic, you okay. know, when I was a kid, especially when I was younger, I didn't think of anything happening as violence or anything like that. But things change and kids change, you know, like I said, if this is my opportunity to go downtown and discover things and coming back, it was sort of like, you know, in my head, I could have been there. Okay. I was sort of like a hard head. So it's easy for a hard head to get into trouble. So tell us about your art a little bit. We have some images flashing um, behind us on the screen. Um, please talk to us about it. Okay. I mean, I see, I see uh, sculpture. I see wall art. I see, you know. Okay. A lot of it came uh, because of my basic interest in documentary photography. Now, you see a lot of uh, images from Occupy Wall Street mm -hmm. that I became interested in. And uh, as an artist and a photographer and a kind of like an observer of life, I love the crowds. I would go down to Zuccotti Park, and some of these images are from Foley Square demonstration. So the idea of being with the crowd 
the excitement of being in the crowd. Feeding off of that energy. You feed off the energy and you literally want to preserve the moment. And for me to preserve the moment and the energy, I had my camera, mm -hmm. which I mean, I was a, kind of an amateur photographer before and uh, this excited me. The crowd excited me. The, the passion of the crowd excited me and I wanted to preserve that memory mm -hmm. in a sense where I took the picture. Okay. Snap the picture. And did, that's, you, did you go to school? Did you take art in school? Did you go to school uh, like a uh, Cooper uh, Union or something like that? How did, basically, where did this come out? Uh, I took um, art classes in, in high school. Okay. My father was uh, an amateur photographer. And uh, again, sort of like uh, ethnic or immigrant mentality is that uh, can you get a job being a photographer? Mm -hmm. And the answer in most cases was, I don't know or no. <laughs> so he subliminated his love for, for, for photography mm -hmm. and kind of raised the family. Okay. But, I'm going to have to take a ahead. station break, a PSA. Before I go, I just wanted to say my father had a saying uh, in terms of artists because my sister Corinne might have been only the second confessed artist in our fa right. immediate family. And he used to always say that artists starve. You better get a job. Right. Sounds <laughs> so good. We're going to cut to a commercial break right now and we'll be right back. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Uh, 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 uh. Um, so, how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. <laughs> Here is my handle, and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over, over and pour me out. Oh. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Boom. Okay, America, we're back at you. Um, Joe, during that break, we brought out a piece of, 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 of your sculpture. Um, can you please tell us about it a little bit? Okay, this is probably uh, an X-rated piece, and it would be uh, an affront to the Me Too movement, perhaps. A uh, young lady is walking down West Broadway, where I used to sell my art. I was a street artist. Okay. And she just walked by, and I had my camera, of course, ready, because I'm a photographer more than anything else. I snapped her pictures. Now, I call this hot pants. Mm -hmm. And uh, put it away, filed it away, went back, and liked the image, and loved the image. Now, a, a sort of more of a fledgling sculptor than, uh, you know, committed. But again, it's still this realization, can I make a living at it, even though I've got Social Security and a government pension? Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm exploring. I'm still that kid in the candy store. I still want to learn new things because I think Was this something that was forward. innate and natural? Where did it come from? Uh, you, saw, you said your father uh, dabbled a bit, but he uh, was a, did he uh, like he the was fire? He was a photographer. And, but again, he had to subliminate that and raise a family and a whole nine yards. And I always thought I would sort of get even for him, mm -hmm. you know, kind of justify um, his hard work and bringing me up by kind of like doing things that he wanted to mm -hmm. do. So the photography angle was part of like mm -hmm. making him happy. I know um, I have a similar background, photography from fine art. Um, do you fall out of love with a piece after you complete it? 
um, or you continue with the love affair? I get tired of it. I might put this in the closet and I might hide this in the back bedroom, but again, eventually I'll come back to it and see to improve it to, to do something different. Mm -hmm. But it's a stimulus. It's a stimulus for me to, to kind of like work on something different and you know, make another step, baby step, bigger step. So, uh, you know, it, it's a positive thing for me. Okay, all right. Um, I know we, the, the images on the screen are generally of Occupy Wall Street. Are most, most of your work, is it about social commentary? A lot of it. But I think the, the love of the crowd uh, is more of a, a temptation when I when I am with the crowd, and in a sense, I divorce myself from the crowd and I become the photographer. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like uh, part of the crowd. Yeah, you. I, I observe the crowd and mm -hmm. I tend to lose myself. Little photojournalism. Yeah, correct. Okay. And I've you know I've had other friends who are journalists who pretty much have said the same thing. Combat photographers too, who have lost themselves in their work, in some cases have been injured or wounded, doing their job, but yet they come back, which is the thing that it's always, the adrenaline rush, sense of satisfaction. It's a, it's a rush. Mm -hmm. It is the rush, and uh, I I feel it when I'm down in a demonstration or down at a parade or whatever, where I can lose myself and I. I'm in command in a sense, mm -hmm. where if, as an artist, I'm not in command. The art is in command of me. Yes. But as a photographer, I am, I have the weapon. Mm -hmm. Do you get the feel? I used to get a feeling of instant gratification, especially when we moved into the digital world. Um, when we were in the film world, you know, it took a little longer. But in the digital world, it's almost as if the gratification is instant. It's like that first sip of a cold glass of water. Well, the main thing is you don't have to change film. And a lot of the opportunities I had that are wasted in great shots was, oh, shit, I'm out of film. So, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm going to do is load another roll of film. With digital, you constantly press the shutter. Mm -hmm. And you don't run out and you don't lose focus of what you're doing, which is very easy to do if you're a film photographer. Mm -hmm. Or you miss the decisive moment. Okay, okay. Um, this particular piece, um, are you like uh, the rest of us who simply have trouble selling things and being good business people and we're only creative? Um, how do you balance both worlds? I balance the, the fact that being creative and expressing myself and being satisfied with my work is more important than selling. Mm -hmm. Now, since um, I've retired and I don't, you know, need the, the money, you know, for sales of my artwork. It, so it's a little easier. Now I know struggling photographers and struggling artists who would kind of like, you know, be mad at me for expressing myself that way because some people actually have to work for a living and some people actually have to make money because they do have family mm -hmm. and do have to pay the rent. But as far as I'm concerned, I, I'm happy, I'm happy as hell. Well, all through history, I would say the, I venture to say that the majority, 90% or more of artists um, live, you know, at a very basic level. Right. It, in, unless they can find uh, someone to subsidize their work, um, you know, 15, 16, 1700s. These right. guys were actually, you know, eating potatoes That's and penniless true. until they could find a benefactor that would give them a commission that would in right. turn carry them, you know, through, through a season. Well, you know, one kind of like strange uh, story would be that when I was basically photographing, when I was married, my wife would give me money for lunch because I worked down Wall Street, Wall mm -hmm. Street worker. And I would like take that $5 bill for lunch and buy two bananas. Mm -hmm. And I would have the bananas like once or twice a week or more to buy supplies. To buy art supplies. And, you know, people would ask me why I hate mm -hmm. bananas now. Because bananas was the source of film, source of developers, source of chemicals. And uh, without, you know, starving in a sense, I wouldn't, uh, you know, wouldn't be in play. 
I wouldn't be doing anything. Okay. Um, if I mention uh, Utrecht or Canal Art Supplies, um, what images come to your mind when I mention those two stores? Because they, they're both gone now. I don't know, spending my money. <laughs> spending my money because basically I would run down there and, and look for whatever material I needed and I would browse, at least tell myself I was browsing. You know, like shopping, and I'm just window shopping. Mm -hmm. But I always find a, you know, an excuse to buy something that I need or potentially would need. Mm -hmm. Did, ha, when you were at Occupy Wall Street and v various uh, protests, right? Um, do some of those really sad, poignant moments? I mean, is, is that what where you can hold on to something and take it home, and then you know, transpose that anger or that sadness, you know, into an image? Well, it's sort of like uh, I take an image and maybe later on I would find uh, something special about it. Mm -hmm. Like this one young guy with the, the shirt, you know, people before profit. And these are poignant things that, you know, you really hit the nail on the head. And again, uh, George and the kids with the banners. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, extremely powerful. Extremely. And these are extremely powerful because I want a political protest that's related to people. So in other words, uh, a sign or a banner is good, but the relationship to the people who were down in the demonstration mm -hmm. was the best, was the thing that I really wanted to relate to, mm -hmm. what the relationship of the people who were actually there. How did, how did you come into the new digital age? Uh, I know a lot of, you know, younger kids, you know, if they see me with a film camera, they call me a dinosaur. So what brought you into the digital age? Um, are you on the net? How did, how did you work Well, that? actually, it's because of the loss of film. I used to use black and white uh, film, slide film called Scala. Mm -hmm. And when that was discontinued, little by little, I was losing the option of photographing with... Uh, film that I, I could get some sort of uh, balance, or some sort of uh, image, or some sort of look. Mm -hmm. And then little by little it just occurred to me that, hey, you know, I have to kind of step up to the digital age. Basically, I still can't figure out my digital camera, you know, by any uh, stretch of the imagination. A lot of times I just shoot at that automatic uh, function <laughs> and just cross my fingers and just kind of like play around with the, the image, uh, you know, with the software. I always say that, that in photography, that's separated, um, and this, this may be a, I don't think it's a sexist term, but it separates the men from the boys. Right. You know, you have photographers who can go out with a digital camera, and because they can immediately see the result in the viewfinder, um, they believe they're practicing photography. When I was trained, and I'm sure you the same way, this is all pre-digital, and you have to know your f-stops, and, you, and right. you, know, you have to know your settings. You have to know what your equipment does. Right. My, my teacher used to always say, learn your equipment. Right. Know your equipment. Don't go out and buy all of these things. Know well, your I don't equipment. know my equipment. Learn your equipment. And I've failed in that with the <laughs> digital, because you know, I'm not like, uh, you know, not a techie. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I walked into, and this is 19, 1995. Um, I had been a photographer in high school, always wanted to pursue photography um, because of the expense, got away from it. Um, and in college, picked it up again just after college um, because I needed to photograph subjects uh, to paint portraits the immediate gratification, the feeling I got from photographing the subject superseded um, the hours upon hours and days and weeks painting a portrait because that was a long term. This was so short. And, and for me, uh, I said to myself, you know what? I've got to figure out a place where I can learn. Um, I always believed in the apprenticeship method. Right. So I walked into a photo studio, um, probably my 50th one on Long Island. I had moved to Long Island. And I was in Freeport, and there was a place called Glickman Studio. Um, it had been a, uh, a mainstay in the community for close to 50 years. And I spoke to a gentleman, uh, Galvin Bisserup, and I said, hey, listen, I'm a young photographer, and I really would like to learn this art form, and I would like to learn it under 
a seasoned uh, professional. Um, and he said, sure, uh, go to the corner store, get yourself a notebook, you know, and you show up here tomorrow um, and we'll start the life lessons. And I have probably dabbled in and out for the last 25 years um, with him over my shoulder as, you know, a guardian angel. So you, de you, you definitely... Uh, you need your mentor. Need, yeah, well, it's the, one of those things where you need it, you know. Well, and he was mentor. And he was great because he mm. was hands-off. Right. He would give you the lesson and then send you into the, in, 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 into the street, you know, and apply it. And then you come back um, with, your, with, your, with your shots and your notes because you had to take notes with shots. Right, you couldn't yeah. just take shots and then have them uh, just sitting separate. You had to take notes and give a description with the shot. And he'd critique you, and he was very critical, but it made you, it, it made you uh, professional. It made you strong. You know? No, that, that's it. You know, you needed a mentor. I had uh, a gentleman named Jack Barmall. Mm -hmm. He was a freelance photographer, wedding, this, that, everything. But we went down to the South Bronx every weekend, mm -hmm. and we spent literally the whole one, was Friday night, and Saturday night, even into Sunday, doing the things that we'll say a world famous photographer, Ouija, who was a press mm -hmm. photographer, did. So that was my experience, not as much with the camera because I was like carrying all these film holders because he had speed graphic. Oh, okay. Medi and I medium graduated, format. I graduated mm -hmm. to that by carrying. Of course. Film holders. The not that has, yeah. I had the camera, mm -hmm. not even near the camera, but just the idea. And this is where and I loading, learned. And preloading all of this film form. This is where I learned that I loved the, the energy that came out of being a photographer. Mm -hmm. Because basically the, the Bronx was burning down mm -hmm. and I was the witness. And I could see everything. And I felt the energy coming from me that I wanted to have more of it. I wanted to mm -hmm. experience more of it because, like I said, that's the rush. Okay. The rush okay. of literally having the weapon in your hand and... Tell us about some of your future product projects. Um, I mean, there's, a, there's <clears throat> hell, there are movements, there are uh, demonstrations, and there's a lot going on socially right now. You know, the NFL players kneeling, the police brutality issues, the, like you said, the Me Too issues um, with sexual harassment in the workplace, um, unequal opportunities. Um, what are you working on now? Well, I recently went to a demonstration, it was last year, uh, Million Women's March and with the pink hats. So I, I went back to that and I still do, exp shall I say, catalog the, the graffiti. Mm -hmm. And that is again one of my loves, the, whether it's in South America or whether it's, it's here downtown, this is on the Bowery. So that we split between that and uh, more of a political mm -hmm. enterprise. So now at the time of Trump, I would expect myself to be super busy if I, you know, so I can just rely on him to be, in a sense, my mentor, or should I say my stimulus. <laughs> yeah, because, I definitely say a stimulus, not a mentor. Because I think things will get progressively worse as he sort of like, becomes much more erratic. So it's just easy enough to be, get off at the well, we're, circle. We're just about a little more than a month away uh, from an important uh, midterm election right. where the rubber's going to hit the road. So that's going to be uh, pivotal in finding out which way you know, the country's going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just like, hey, you know, I'm busy. Sometimes I don't want to be that busy, because, but once I get into the groove, once I get into a position where I'm at a demonstration, I feel the people's energy mm -hmm. and they transfer it to me and I become the person who is like the band leader, mm -hmm. You're the maestro. Mm -hmm. And have, I, you know, it just, I kind of like uh, get the energy from the people. Mm -hmm. Have you done any um, moving images or just strictly still stuff? Strictly still stuff. Okay. My son is a cinematographer who fell in love with uh, food and became a restaurateur. So, you know, I'm waiting for are... him to be the next generation of, of artists and cinematographers and photographers. Well, I think both mediums go together. I mean, I don't know a single chef uh, that's not an artist in his own no, right. That's true. 
Yeah, that's, that's true. So they, they definitely go together. Um, so um, do you have any new projects coming up that we should be able to look out for? Well, basically, I'll be t a member of the Art Students League and taking classes there. Mm -hmm. So it's and sort are, of like... For those who don't know, to please tell them how famous the Art Students League is. Well, it seems like every credible artist, one way or another, has have gone through the Art Students League. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of the place to be, whether you're going, you know, for a year or two or what, you're taking a program that many people have taken, like a two-year program mm -hmm. or what. Or you're like me who just got there. And, and never left. Take, and, you know, taking classes. Mm -hmm. You know, random classes, what, you know, appeals to me. So uh, basically, that's why this is where I learned to be a sculptor. Okay. Or want to be sculptor. Okay. You know, it depends on, you know, where I, where I wind mm -hmm. up. My Whether it's says, going to be hot pants for a million dollars mm -hmm. sold at Sotheby's or uh, somebody just liking it on the subway. Okay. You know, it's my piece, so, you know, I own it and whether people like it or not. But yet, it gives me the satisfaction of being an artist. And that's, it's all about the self-expression. It's creating, It's all yeah. about that. We have uh, roughly one minute left. Would you like to say something in closing, remarks? Well, again, you know, we start out with the fact that I haven't uh, grown up yet. Or maybe it's my second childhood or third childhood. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I go on. And I, I tell my kids and I, I tell whoever is around is that you constantly have to move forward, not backwards, and, and improve the situation because you have so much time in your life, you might as well appreciate what you have. Okay. And uh, my last statement is, uh, you know, whether you're creating in the kitchen, in the dark room, on the computer, whether your, you know, your creative force goes into dance, um, it's all about creation. It's all about actually giving birth to things uh, and making sure that you don't get complacent. You know, it's a, uh, it's a uh, one of one of the funniest things that ever happened to me. And I'll say this before we close: is uh, I was forced to come back to college and take two classes, one of which was an art class because I didn't have any humanities on my, on my transcript. And if I had not taken that class, I potentially would not have had the life experience that art and photography have led me to. So, uh, hey, Joe, I really appreciate having you here. And, I'm happy uh, to be here. Can't wait to see some more of your pieces. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll, uh, you know, be your muse. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you'll, you know, do a yeah. sculpture of a big guy with a beard. Yeah, but, uh <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you very Use much for coming critic. down. You're all welcome. Okay.